Good Monday morning to you. It's great to have you here with me again for the Matthew Bible study. Uh, before we get to our uh, study number 36, I just want to uh, give a special thank you to all of you who were here uh, with us on Sunday morning yesterday. I, I know the weather was really lousy and I also know many of you are, are sick and couldn't be with us, but those of you who came, it was just a really special time. And I know many of you are following this uh, Bible study, so I just want to extend a very uh, gracious thank you from Mary Kay and myself to you. We really appreciate your support. Now, let's uh, get on with our Matthew Bible study. I am so excited about this week. This is going to be a great week of study for all of us because we are we really set the stage last week talking a lot about temptation, about what the word means, about the general principles that we see in James and and then back in in um, Genesis and and we really got a broad brush stroke of the issue of temptation for Christ followers. This week we're going to be taking a look very specifically at the temptation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Uh, this is uh, really quite a scene uh, between our Master and Savior uh, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, and the tempter, Satan, who Jesus names as Satan. D did you know that Satan uh, actually means the accuser, and oftentimes that's exactly what he does, isn't it? He reminds you of all the things that you have done wrong, and he does the same thing to me and tries to weaken our faith. Well, we're going to see how he tempted Jesus and what Jesus did about it, and we're going to learn how we can benefit from what we learn in Matthew chapter 4. So let's take a look at, the first of all, the uh, verses that we want to get into. We've already covered verses 1 and 2, so we want to pick it up today with uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he, this would be Jesus, he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now there's a lot in these two verses. We probably won't get it all done here today. But we will uh, again uh, spend our five to ten minutes every day and get as much as we can out of this so that you really have some meat, some real bread, some real word of God to help you uh, with the temptations that you come across in your life. You know, the first thing we want to take a look at is, is that this temptation is age old. Uh, this was not something that, you know, was just brand new for Jesus. And it might be surprising to you when you stop and think, well, who else would, would uh, you know, the tempter be talking about if you are the Son of God? Uh, he certainly wouldn't say that to you or to me, right? So this temptation would really have nothing at all to do with me. Well, if we read it that way, we really miss out on what's going on. Because you see, this temptation is exactly the same one that the tempter used for Eve in the Garden of Eden. That's right. Do you remember what, the, what Satan said to Eve? Did God really say that you shouldn't eat from any tree of the garden? Do you remember that? You see, the temptation here is to question the Word of God to question what we know God has said. And again, putting this in context, and we always want to look at Scripture in context, what just happened? Uh, within the last 40 days, right, that Jesus was baptized, came up out of the water, the Spirit of God descends upon him like a dove, and from the heavens we hear the voice of God, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. So what is it that Satan is getting at here in the temptation? Did God really say you're the Son of God? I mean, if that's true, if you are the Son of God, well, by all means, why don't you prove it? Why don't you misuse your power, because you're certainly hungry. In fact, the NRSV uh, doesn't say hungry. It says Jesus was famished, right? 
then why don't you turn these stones into bread and misuse your power? And of course, Jesus comes back and says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, we're going to talk more about this tomorrow, but I want to have an application here because you see, there are many times that you may not even realize it, but Satan tempts you and tempts me. He'll come across and say, well, did he really tell you to do this? Or did he really say to do that? And always, always, the idea is for Satan to put the wedge in between the relationship between me and my Heavenly Father, or between you and your Heavenly Father. That's what Satan was trying to do here. Jesus, you're the Son of God. You shouldn't be going hungry. It would be understandable if you wanted to provide food for yourself. I'm sure God would understand. Go ahead and do it. There are times when you and I will want to misuse the gifts that God has given us. You see, each one of us have received gifts from God. Jesus had supernatural abilities. You again may say, well, gee, I'd never be tempted to turn stones into bread. Well, you know why? Because you can't do it. That's not your gift. But you do have a gift. God has given you maybe the gift of gab, or maybe he has given you the gift of insight or the gift of wisdom. He may have given you an ability to understand his word. He may have given you a great uh, ability to sing. Whatever it is that he has given you, the temptation for us is always to use that gift selfishly for myself rather than for God or for others. So the next time you come across a situation that you think you could just solve on your own, if you simply took care of it, you may be missing out on God's incredible blessing for you of what he wants to do for you if you will simply sit back and say, wait a minute, it's not my will, it's God's will. If he wants me to do this, he'll let me know. And I'll use my God, I'll use my will to God's glory and only for his glory. Well, that's enough for today. I hope that you have a great Monday and we'll talk more about this particular temptation tomorrow morning.